we're talking to Sean Corcoran, sand artist based in Bunman in County Waterford. Sean, it's great to talk to you today. Thanks a million for taking the time. Thanks, Fab guys. It's a fabulous place out here. Um, Cheers. Can you tell us a bit about your work and how you got into sand art? Uh, well, the sand art began uh, one day in April 2004. Was it 2004 or 2014? 2014. I was sitting on the cliff down in Kilmurran overlooking the beach below. And um, we had only moved into the area. And I was looking for... Uh, I was actually... It was very strange because it was like an epiphany moment. But it was like... Uh, I was looking for an answer as to what are we going to do to make a living here. My wife and two, mm. two young kids uh, had mm. just moved to the area and we were opening an art school. But at that point I could see no, I was blind, I could see no natural materials, I couldn't see any potential for making art in the landscape. Mm. Uh, and then a horse was led from a uh, horse box down, with a rope down onto the beach and was led around and around in circles <sighs> with a lunge rope and it left the most beautiful circle. Wow. And it was a kind of an epiphany moment. It's like, a, if a horse can do it, so can I. That's pretty amazing. Well, it was, yeah, I literally ran home and got a rake straight away and just tried it out. And then I discovered, of course, there is sand artists right around the world. So we, mm. there's not that many of us, but there's a nice kind of community uh, internationally around the world, in that, which is nice that uh, we, uh, we get to meet up occasionally. And um, uh, so, yeah, so, so it's a lovely community. So that's how it all began. That's amazing. <laughs> Sounds like it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, it f felt like that. And how many pieces now, do, like, do you think you've done at this um, point? Do you rack them up? I, I, I'm quite meticulous, actually, about, um, like, because the work is uh, temporary and it's uh, washed away or certainly with the, with the, the drawings, with the, mm. with the rake, like, it's, you know, the tide comes in and washes it all away. I... Um, so I'm very particular about recording it in yeah. terms of like the photographs and the video. So I've done about maybe about 400 pieces. I do have a catalog, an archive okay. of every single piece of art that I've ever made in the environment yet. Wow. And would most of the work you do be around the southeast or do you travel all over? Like on a day to day basis, like we're our art school, the art hand is based here in, yeah. in Bon Man on the Copper Coast. Uh, so we're literally halfway between Dungarvan and Tremor, so we've, we're, we're spoilt for choice in terms of the environment here. But I suppose a lot of the more commercial work that I do in the sand art would be um, ar right around Ireland, um, uh, Kerry, Cork, uh, Galway. We did a couple of projects last year in, in uh, Northern Ireland. We, we did uh, a few projects in the UK. We were in Northumberland and Scotland. And this um, was a very exciting project we were doing this uh, March in Texas. Oh. So wow. uh, I've been commissioned to go over there as part of a land art festival called the Lano Earth Art Festival, LEAF for short, LEAF, L-E-A-F is the, wow. is the uh, it's nowhere near the coast, it's hundreds of miles from the coast, okay. it's in the river valley with loads of boulders, uh, so it's, uh, I'm going to be making art in the uh, dirt and mud and shrub and boulders and rivers, and that. it's not a desert but it's not far off, yeah. there's not a lot of growth there. So it's, uh, I can't wait for that to get over in March. That's exciting. And it's our whole, like you're the only one that does it. I mean, there's not a team that comes along and does the actual piece itself. It's just you. Uh, no, sometimes there could be, uh, there could be two, one, two, three, four, five. I've worked with up to 28 people at any one time. Okay. So like uh, my friend Joe Lonergan often joins me on some of the adventures that we go on around the country. And, um, but for more commercial work, there could be like uh, for Clean Coast Week in Northern Ireland, we had... I don't know, 20 or 30 people, volunteers. Okay. We've worked with universities, the university in Belfast, where they might have 30 or 40 volunteers. So, like the solo pieces where it's just me, where I go down, uh, uh, that for me, I suppose, would be my favourite work. It's the non-commercial yeah. work. I don't yeah. know what I'm about to draw. Yeah. And it's really a case of responding to, the, uh, to what I find on the day. And that for me is kind of like almost like a form of meditation. Okay, because I was going to ask you, what inspires you actually, you know, you go down and you have a rake. Is that the only tool you use to do uh, it? Yeah, well, I, um, yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, like, yeah, like a, a garden rake, a few different types of rakes. Uh, I like to use wild bamboos as well that I gather. But yeah, I mean, what inspires me, I suppose, would be like what I encounter on the day. Okay. Uh, so when it's a solo piece and it's not a brief, it's not a commercial thing, um, there isn't a lot of people watching it and, and I don't mm. have to fulfill anything. It, yeah. it, 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 my work would just normally be 
a response to the available sand. You know, I'd be considering where the sun is, and where the sun is going to be in two or three hours' time, where the tide is going to be in two or three okay. hours' time, and trying to pace it and trying to time it with, um, you'd be hoping for a kind of like an, uh, a moment where the sun uh, just peers through the clouds and there's this shaft of light uh, comes down in a kind of a Monty Python kind of way <laughs> at the very end and all the clouds just part and um, you get the money shot then. Yeah, sounds very spiritual actually. Well, it can like, be. Like, uh, it's your mind, um, no matter what you've been doing during the day or what yeah. your deadlines are or what you've got to do or whatever, like you can't possibly think of all these other things because you become so consumed mm. in the moment. So like mindfulness is all about the moment, isn't yeah, it? So like, it I is. mean, you can't really... Uh, think about the past and you can't really you really in a beautiful way um, like I, I wouldn't call myself overly spiritual but there is a kind of a spiritual element to it that uh, I'm very open to in terms of just being at one with nature mm. and being quiet and responding to nature and the only thing you would be kind of conscious of is the changing tide the changing weather you know clouds that are coming in you'd be very aware of the direction of the wind yeah. And there's a bit of an adrenaline rush sometimes as well. If you if you know that there's a bank of uh, rain about to hit, yeah. like yesterday, I was in between two rain showers. Mm. So I had a gap of about two hours, and there was four or five of us working on a piece. And uh, met Aaron got the got the timing, or I got the timing maybe of the gap slightly wrong. So we missed the uh, we missed the Monty Python moment with right. the sun by about five minutes. And uh, but we still got like a you know you can't always. You're always kind of like trying to work with nature and see what you can get the, the best yeah. out of. But if nature is full of surprises, so that's kind of, half kind of wins in the end then, because the tide comes in or it rains and it kind of, you know, it's the boss. Oh, it yeah. washes oh, it God, away. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, I mean, that for me is like a, is a it, that's a beautiful part of it for yeah. me. Now, yeah. in fairness, if, if my camera broke down or my drone wasn't able to fly, I'd be a bit upset that I didn't get a photo of yeah, it yeah. but you know in a mindful kind of way I suppose I'd just be accepting that look yeah. that's one of the ones that the fish that got away and you got to do it as well the process yeah. of doing it is exactly big deal as well so yeah. so I suppose we've been talking interviewing people around Waterford um, and we always ask them what's their favourite place to, to relax in Waterford um, favourite Waterford slang things they like about Waterford people anything that sticks out to you mm-hmm. about where you like to go or the, what we've always heard, well boy and the blah, is there anything yeah. you to, to add uh, to that? Well, my favourite place in Waterford? Yeah. Like, because, because I'm, in, I'm, if you want to call it an environmental artist, I suppose my, my art is my getaway from the rest of the world. And, okay. like, today I'm stuck at the computer all day, but, yeah. but I'm looking out at the weather and wishing I could be out there. <laughs> and for me, um, the place on the island of Ireland that I like the best is the shore okay so wherever you are in ireland we're an island so it's like the edge is um at low tide there's places at low tide that you can't get to unless you time it for low tide yeah. and that for me is like kind of a the element of exploring that section of ground okay. at low tide uh, no matter where i go if it, mm. it was in northern ireland even or whatever like just finding that little cave looking at the little thing and just looking at the opportunities um but uh, we did get a new couch in the house at the moment, so that's about my second favourite really? place, is, is a new, new little couch. It's comfy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there would be a lot of places, actually, even along here in the drive out in the Copper Coast, that, you know, is exposed more as well. So you're kind of, you're yeah. near, near it all the time, yeah. actually, here. Yeah. Well, for me, like, around here, like, I've, we're blessed, like, we've got Kilmurran Cove on this yeah. side and Bumman on this Fabulous. side. Fabulous. But in between, even, even within that short space, like... Um, like I've become familiar with the rocks, okay. like boulders, and you know yeah. the level of the sand. Right. You know, uh, on Christmas Day I did a piece, and I noticed how low the sand was at a given place, and there's a love heart rock, and I know that in a few weeks' time that love heart rock will be immersed in three or four foot of sand. Okay. And maybe it will appear again someday, and and I know where it is. Yeah. Well. Uh, so that kind of thing where you're always kind of there's always something new, like the tide and the. Uh, the the shore mm. changes constantly. Mm. So that for me is the beauty of uh, Ireland. Okay, it's quite inspiring as well. Ah, oh, it's phenomenal, yeah. 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 And your favourite Waterford slang then? Do you have one? Or, or even a phrase that you use all the time that you find very Waterford when you see your friends? I suppose um, I meet a lot of people on the shore. I met a woman yesterday uh, 
when she saw I had a stick in the ground and I had a, another pole and a rake and a few things stood up and she thought I was going fishing. Right. And um, she was, a, I, love in, I love in Ireland the way people kind of like, even you weren't looking for help, but they'll offer help. Now, do you know what the best thing now? With the fish? And she was giving me advice as to where you catch the fish. And uh, I love the way uh, in Ireland as well, not just in water, but in Ireland, people, um, if I curse, right, if I drop an old F word yeah. in there, it opens the door up for you to, to really give your vocabulary out there. And I kind of like that yeah. idea. She, she yeah. threw a few Fs in. And Did I was, she? <laughs> I was effing and blinding a bit and we were talking about this way and that way and where you catch the bass. And in the end, I just didn't have the heart to say to her, well, I, ha I had to kind of say to her, listen, I'm not actually going fishing. Mm. I'm actually going to be drawing a picture there. So we had a right old laugh. <laughs> and the two was You're and not effing fishing yeah, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you had three people that you could dine with, dead or alive, who would you pick? To have dinner with? Yeah, you could have them out here if you want yeah. to. Well, um, I suppose the, 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 the definition of the word dinner for me, um, like, uh, okay, dinner time in this house, right? Uh, Matilda, Alfie, my wife, Miranda, the four of us sit around. And if the four of us are in a good humor, there can be an interesting conversation right. about how was your day? What did you learn at school today? <laughs> or did, you, did yeah. you enjoy yourself today? Or what was... You know, and if the dynamic of one out of four people are uh, different uh, or not in a good humour, then that. Well, so I'm always interested in that, and it's always an important part yeah. of our day. But for me, um, uh, dinner, like the other day, I went, uh, I was down on the Cooleen at, at the, the mouth of the River Man, just on this side of Bum Man. Uh, it's where the river comes down, on, just at the, to the left of Bum Man Beach there. It's a beautiful place, and uh, I was wading through the water in my wellies. And I was surrounded by a shoal of, of um, fish. Now, they were quite big fish, uh, but I was convinced they were salmon because I don't, I'm not a fisherman. Right. No, I, and you I, weren't fishing. Well, I was <laughs> <laughs> definitely weren't fishing. Well, I was ringing my friend Joe, you better get down here with your rod. So Joe arrived down here with his rod and ran down, ran down along the rocks. And uh, right enough, the fish were still there jumping out of the water and so on. And I could just imagine, I actually lit a little fire there and I was doing some stone stacking while he was fishing and, well... The fish were literally jumping up out of the river um, and I could just imagine us cooking that fish just right there mm. and then. And that for me would be a better dinner than, than anything, just being on the shore and eating whatever it is you have in your pockets or catching that elusive yeah. fish. And yeah. he, he still didn't manage to catch fish, even though really? they were literally jumping out of the water. <laughs> now, the woman I met that was cursing on the beach said that they were actually mullet. Oh, really? Rather than salmon, yeah. yeah. She knew her stuff. Yeah, yeah she did. Yeah. Well, you can still eat mullet. Uh, your favourite place to eat, actually. Any restaurant you, you like to go to in County Waterford or Waterford City? Uh, well, my friend Ted Milan is always uh, in Jeff's. Oh, is yes. always, uh, it's not so much, it's not even just that they have fantastic food in there. It's just that kind of uh, moment of like uh, being able to see the flames coming up through the kitchen when, he, when they're mm. cooking a stir fry. Mm. Or when you ask for a cup of tea, it's like, what kind of tea would you like? And yeah. this, you know, and yeah. the different types of tea and... and uh, you know, meeting uh, Ted Milan, uh, which we did, Miranda and I did recently, is just moments like that make for me. I'm not very much into uh, formal dining in restaurants, to be okay. honest. Uh, my favourite place to eat would probably be on the shore. Okay. If you had a superhero power, what would it be? Like, I'm absolutely useless at uh, surfing. Okay. I've tried a few times and I just seem to have an instinct of putting the board up in front of me to protect me from the wave, <laughs> which is not what you're meant to do, because that's really not. So I, I have absolutely no instinct when it comes to that. Um, but I would love uh, at low tide to be able to walk into the water and just continue down along the shore, down underwater, being able to breathe mm. underwater. Okay. Uh, I suppose uh, it would be um, nice to... Um, I, I, I have often been thinking of making art underwater. So um, being able to breathe underwater would maybe perhaps okay. help that. Okay. Get like a glass bubble tank or something. Well, I don't know. I just like, wouldn't, I'd like to not have to have any equipment with me, but just be able to walk, to walk into in the... Underneath. Yeah. Now, I would say as well, like when you fly a drone, um, as I often do, with, with the art that I do and along the shore, like the bird's eye view that, that you, these days mm. is so accessible. Mm. Like five or ten years ago, like aerial images were like, not accessible people weren't you know never they never you know sometimes people had a picture of their house 
uh, above the fireplace. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's and that was took. a big deal, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, wow, look at our house with all the stuff that we should have cleared away before the photo. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, but so for me, I do also, um, you know, the idea, when you look at a seagull, or even crows are amazing flyers, right? Yeah. And you look at a, look, look at a crow or look at a seagull, and the way they're able to just find that air pocket, you know, in between, mm. uh, like, I was flying a drone in, in 42 kilometer an hour winds uh, a few months back, which is like, you're not meant to fly a drone in that kind of, that's quite, that's, a, that's right. windy. That's very okay. windy. <laughs> so, but I was able to find a place where I was able to put the drone, the drone was being thrown around the place and I was just kind of trying to stabilize it. But, I, but like a seagull, I was actually able to find a place uh, back from a cliff, not in, a, not in the place where you'd expect the wind to drop, but I was actually able to find a place where I could actually just park the drone up in the sky and it, not a budge. Well, well, but yet all around it was an absolute storm. Okay. And there's another place just in the front field down from here that even in a gale, even in gale force storms or um, that close, close to hurricane kind of winds that we had a couple of years back, there's a place down there that when the wind comes up over the cliff, there's a section, maybe about 100 foot of a circle, where no wind hits the grass. So it's like flat, calm grass in this area, and everywhere around it is just flapping. And why is that? Because of the cliffs around it? Yes, yeah, the shape of the southwesterly prevailing wind kind of hits, hits the cliff on either side and it funnels it up, um, and it goes up over the top of it and comes away. Okay. So, so it's very strange to walk through a field where you're literally being thrown around, and then it's just pure, calm. quiet, and calm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like you know all the special places. Actually. Well, like you know, that's <laughs> you know the, the landscape yeah, it's, quite it's, well. Yeah, it's getting to know. Like I love returning to places. Like when I do festivals uh, in the UK or around Ireland, uh, you know, and I might get called back the second year or the third year, and it might only just be a simple beach on a ta- in a town or a village, whatever. But getting to know how how the tide changes, how quick it comes back in, the levels and the terrain and the rocks and the cliff. Mm. And where the sun is going to be as well, because mm. like here you're used to the sun rising in the east and it's setting yeah. in the west, as it does as it does elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But when you go to, we'll say, the east coast of Ireland or the east coast of the UK, east is in a different place. Mm. Like we're used to looking out, we'll say, on the south coast here, we're lo- used to looking out and on the left is the east. Yeah. You know, but when you change that dynamic, like in Northumberland, I was looking out at Norway rather than looking down at Spain. So, you know, it's a different yeah. uh, dynamic. So the aspect of what we are... You have to reorient yeah. yourself, yeah. yeah. Who would play you in the film of your life? <laughs> well, Neil Tobin recently died, and um, he played my dad in uh, uh, Jim Nolan's production yeah. of yeah. The Salvage Shop. And my favourite actor that... Well, when I say he played my dad, like Jim Nolan based... Uh, his play, he set his play in the salvage shop that m- my dad and I had. Um, and we were like the uh, guinea pigs or the role models for how, how he'd structured his play. Okay. So in, in, in the same way, uh, the father and son in the play and the father and son in, in, in our reality of the salvage shop, John Olhan, the actor, played uh, the son. So, um, so, okay. so John, John Olhan can play me. Okay. How would you like to be remembered? Again, it seems kind of selfish, like going back to my art, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm not. But I suppose from a monumental point of view, it is what I leave behind me in terms of my art that in many ways will live on. But somebody recently said to me at a funeral, actually, the undertaker, uh, Pat Hennessy, said to me recently at uh, Miranda's mother's uh, funeral uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, I asked him, I asked him something, I don't, I'm not quite sure what way I phrased it, but it, because he's an undertaker, right? I, I do a lot of memorials, private memorials that are never seen online, where I'd work with groups or families that have been bereaved, and we make, uh, I'd facilitate art events or sand art, okay. whatever. So I have kind of delved into my own, um, spirituality or in terms of how to to facilitate that kind of thing with other people uh, to share a celebration of someone's life or the sorrow of someone's passing so I used the opportunity to ask Pat Hennessy recently uh, what um, how he saw 
the afterlife in terms of what his beliefs were. I can't remember what way I, I phrased it, but he actually quite simply uh, said that he, he, he isn't a big churchgoer, that he wouldn't have a big massive faith in that regard, uh, but that uh, he sees that he, he will live on in his, grandchild, his children and his grandchildren. And that, for me, struck a chord. I thought that was mm. so, so beautiful that no matter what we do in this life, if we have the opportunity to have children and they have the opportunity to have children again, that uh, all those things we can pass on to the next generation. And, you know. It's so important, mm. the legacy. Yeah. And just about the types of people, so you're talking about how you use art to facilitate people getting over things. The, mm -hmm. So the art school here, actually, you have classes and workshops. So... Would groups of people like that come here? I mean, I know kids would come here and do crafts and you do mm -hmm. Miranda and you do the mosaics and lots of fabulous yeah. things here. Yeah. I mean, do you do that type of, you know, is it just people come for a fun day out or um, do like, you know more kind of therapeutic style workshops? Would you do something like that? Uh, these days, um, we're able to pick and choose. That sounds a bit cocky, but uh, <laughs> like 10 years ago, we... Eight, eight or nine years ago, whatever it was, when we opened the art hand, um, it was in, at the height of a recession, right? So what do you need in a recession? You don't need art. It's the first, like, you know, art mm -hmm. is the last thing in your list. Mm. So that's why we said, right, we're going to open an art school and we're going to teach art and get create bring groups yeah. together and with weekly courses and all kinds of things for children and adults. And we developed quite a reputation for ourselves through, through, through the kind of work that we were doing, um, collaborative art and stuff like that, different projects in schools and that. But in the last year or two, especially I suppose with the environmental art and the beach art, uh, yeah. we've been able to pick and choose uh, the projects that we take on. So okay. we're less and less, we only take private groups now. Okay. So if a group of friends or a, group, a family group wants to do a collaborative mosaic or wants to do a beach project, We'll, 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 we'll facilitate that. Okay. But we don't uh, advertise events where we look for people to take bookings anymore. Okay. Because we're literally just, I mean, between now and next uh, September, uh, I'm personally not available to take on any projects. Like okay. I, I have a book to, to have completed for the library uh, next, before next March. Uh, a lovely project we're doing with migrant families. It's an art workshop that culminates in a book. Oh, lovely. And then uh, I'm off to Texas for two weeks, and then I'm into the forest in Curramore uh, for, the, for the All Together Now Festival. We do forest art there. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> and that brings us up to the end of August. I think that's on. And uh, we've maybe seven or eight other projects, smaller one-day projects between okay. already booked in. Between. So literally, if a school approached me now and said, we would love you to come to the school and do a collaborative mosaic, I'd have to say... Uh, yeah, next September. Mm. I literally couldn't take on a project, which, it, like, you know, five years ago, if you said that, it'd be like, when can yeah, I start? Yeah. Uh, you know. Look and, how far you've come. So yeah, so, yeah, so it's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah. That, same with Miranda. Like, she's now painting. She returned to painting. Like, she hadn't painted in 14 years since wow. we had the children. Okay. Uh, because of the fumes off of the paints and stuff. And we were too busy trying to earn a living, and teaching was the easiest way during a recession. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but she's been able to return to her painting and has had a couple of pop-up exhibitions and so on. Right. Uh, so it's, it seems uh, people look at us as the, uh, the idyllic life and the artist retreat and the luckiest people in the world. And, you know, we work, we work really yeah. hard, uh, but yeah, it's, it's now being it's paid, paid off. Now. Be, yeah, yeah. And being paid to do what we want to do yes. really is just, it's so, so beautiful. Dream job. It really is. It really is. Okay. Um, I was with uh, Green Party um, uh, councillor Marco Kohasig doing a piece for the Green Party yesterday down on the beach, and it was it was it was we were trying to measure that gap between the rain and uh, myself and Mark there, and there was a few other people helped us and they were gone. And Mark turned around to me and we were being pelted with the rain at this stage. And he said, "Are we finished now?" I said, "No, no, we've got to mark out all these." And he said to me, "Do you know what? I think you've got the best job ever." Mm -hmm. And that that kind of struck a chord with me. It's kind of like, and. You know, and we both got down to it and turned our back to the worst of the rain and uh, carried on with what we were doing. And uh, and the sun eventually did come out, not when it was, not when we were hoping it for, to yeah. come out, but uh, yeah. it came about five minutes late. Uh, but so, yeah, like I do think like I sometimes have to pinch myself and think, Jesus, this is great being paid to do what I like doing. Love doing. Yeah, can see. <laughs> so 
Um, last question then. So any advice for young people today, be those who want to get into something like this? I mean, sand art, you know, it's not something that comes to the forefront, I suppose, for a young person, but, you know, your work's really inspiring. Like, do you mentor? Would you have advice for anyone who would want to do that? I suppose, um, like, I'm working with about 16 uh, migrant families from yeah. all around the world at the moment, yeah. a Chinese family, a Syri Syrian family, a couple of families from Sudan. Um, and, like, the... the the potential in some of these people that are now living in Ireland is phenomenal, mm. right? And like we all have this this kind of thing where when someone doesn't speak English as fluently as us, we seem to think that they're not as smart as us or not as, you know, but like some of these people are just latent knowledge and skills and potential in, in people. So I suppose like... I, I really do like to encourage people to look at the positive. Like, I mean, even with the I Am Warfare page on Facebook, there's a group page. Yep. Um, the whole ethos of that group that, uh, that I'm the admin of is like sharing pride and positivity. And I think the, if there was one piece of advice I could give anyone is like, if there's a problem to be solved or, you know, f trying to find a solution for something that needs fixing, yep. and there's plenty of things that need fixing in Warford, is, you know, Try and change the dynamic of it for a second and try and think of it in a positive way. And it's that kind of shift, behavioral, there's a name on this kind of thing, behavioral science or yeah. uh, it, cognitive well, behavior. Yeah, yeah, CBT. Cognitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I think, I think um, you know, for, for a young person, um, you know, that wanted to be an artist or, or so on, like, be positive, get out there, be proactive, be... be we can't all be confident, right? Um, like, I, I, I am a bit brash about my work. I, I mean, I, I don't really care who... I'm not in competition with anyone. Yeah. I'm only in competition with myself. Exactly. And I always have been. This, I, I always only... And I am competitive, but I'm only competitive with myself. Yeah. Isn't, I always, Push yourself. I always try and make something better and make something better. And I made a piece of stained glass recently, and I thought, oh, wow, imagine if I did this, imagine yeah. if I did that. So, 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 like, don't... Like, that's why art school took, the, took so much creativity out of people back in the past when I was growing up. Yeah. When, like, when all my friends were going to art college and I was making things, um, like, they'd come home from art college and I'd come home from a day's work making stained glass or mosaic or whatever I was making. And it's like, and, you know, people lose that. If you, if you become too aware of what's been made before you, then you can't, you're, you're, not, you're looking back, you're not looking forward. Yeah. So I would say to people, Get up, get out, make stuff, be happy with it, move on and make some more stuff. That's great advice, Sean. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks a million. Thanks really a enjoy the Cheers. chat. Cheers. Best of luck in all your projects. <laughs> you plenty to keep busy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>